In this part of the KO2 tutorial series, we are going to take a look at the effects as well as the master compressor. The effects can be accessed by pressing the effects button. Who would have thought? And there are various effects that we can select from by pressing the plus and minus button. So we can select no effect, delay, reverb, distortion, chorus, filter, and a compressor. And that's it. So for now, let's select the reverb. So I've got this very simple beat here. Now let's check out how we go about applying this effect because for now we didn't really hear it. And the way this works is that this is a send effect. And that means we have to decide how much of each of the sounds or rather how much of each of the groups we are sending to this effect in order to hear it. Because right now this effect just lives there on its own but it isn't getting any signal from my groups. And the way to send signal from these four groups there is by selecting the group and assigning the fader to the effect send as it is here. So right now this is my drum group. If I turn the fader down, I'm not sending to the reverb, but as I pull up the fader, And calling this an effect send is also slightly misleading because in the case of this reverb right now, if I pull it to the middle, I can still hear my original drums, but also the reverb at the same level. As I pull it higher, my original drums are getting lost and I only hear the reverb. So now I'm only getting wet signal, no dry signal. Let's turn the other groups down and examine this a bit more closely. So my drums are dry, no reverb added. Slowly, slowly adding some reverb. Now we are at 50-50 dry signal and wet reverb signal and now only the reverb signal. So this is in this case more of a dry wet control. Let's check out the reverb's parameters. We've got the reverb length so this determines how large the room is. And then here we've got the color control or the tone control of the reverb, meaning are we filtering out low frequencies or high frequencies. So as we turn it counterclockwise, the reverb will get darker. Or clockwise, we get more high frequencies, less low frequencies. And in the middle we get both. Let's introduce some of the dry signal. So that is the reverb. Let's change the effect. The amount we are sending to the effect right now stays the same. So we're in the middle of the fader, so it's 50-50. Now let's move over to the delay. And you can hear we are immediately sending to the delay as well. Here the orange knob is controlling the delay time. And the black knob controls the feedback. That means how many repeats are we hearing. So now we only hear one repeat. 
and if we turn it up, we hear a lot of repeats. Up to self oscillation. And so on. Good fun. Alright, next effect. Distortion. Let's send more to it. Now we only hear the distorted signal. Um, yeah, here we have the drive parameter. So how hard are we clipping this distortion? And then again, we have a color control clockwise focusing more on the highs and counterclockwise more on the lows. Very nice. Then we have the chorus effect. So here we got the feedback parameter. And the modulation speed. Then we've got a filter, very simple. Low pass filter counterclockwise, so you're only hearing low frequencies. And high pass filter clockwise, so you're only hearing the high frequencies. And here you've got a resonance control. So let's sweep it. and without resonance, not as tasty. We got the compressor. You can really slam your drums with this. And the release time of the compressor. And yeah, that's it for the effect so far. So, these are all the effects and I think overall they're pretty nice. And again, you can choose how much of each of the groups of sounds you want to send to the effects. So some of them could be completely wet, some of them could be 50-50, some of the groups don't send to the effects at all. And furthermore, it gets really interesting when you start automating the fader movements because we can record everything that the fader is doing into the sequencer and in order to hear what's going on there, let's choose the reverb as the effect, play the drums, and turn the reverb off for now. Now I'll hold the record button and then move the fader wherever I want to send to the reverb, and I will record these movements that way. And now you can hear, even though the fader is turned all the way down, when my snare is hitting, it is sending to the reverb. And while this is happening now, I can adjust the reverb. So the so sound of it, the filtering, or the length. And this is pretty cool because this allows me to only send my snare into the reverb but ignore the kick drum. How about we choose the delay now? We could of course also introduce other groups of sounds.
sounds a bit whack, so <laughs> never mind. But you get the idea. And we could now record different movements onto the other groups. So let's choose the reverb again because it's a bit more tame. So for example, this group here is not sending to the reverb right now, but on the one let's send to the reverb. So we got this movement going on now. That's pretty cool. Different effect sends at different groups at different times in the sequence. So there's all kinds of things you can do with that. And again, you can do this for all the effects. So now these are doing kind of a back and forth between my melodic group and my snare drum going into the chorus. Let's make the snare drum a little more intense. So that's how you record the fader movements for the send effect. They are now baked into the sequence. If we want to erase them, we can press erase and the fader button until it says delete. And now we don't have any more fader movements on group A. So there's no chorus on the snare drum anymore. And that's it about the send effects. Sadly, we can only have one send effect at any given time. So you got to choose whether you want to use the delay, the reverb, distortion and so on. You can only have one of them at any given time. But before I forget, this effect can also be applied on top of whatever is coming into the input of the KO2. So for example, let's use another pocket operator and put it in here. Let's play whatever's on here. I have no idea. Turn it up. All right, yeah. So let's go to our main menu. And here we can decide the volume of the incoming signal. But on the black knob, we can see incoming effects. So how much of the input signal is being sent to the effects. And as I turn it up, you can hear that these drums are now getting sent to whichever effect I have selected. So right now it is reverb, but we could also choose another effect. Let's distort it a little. Chorus. And so on. So that's pretty cool. It also works on the incoming signal. And with the send effects out of the way, let's take a look at the master compressor, which we can access by pressing and holding shift and the effects button. Once again, on the compressor page, we've got these two controls here. This one controls the drive into the compressor. How much signal are we driving into it? And therefore, how much does it have to engage? So I pr play my drums and turn up the signal. 
now you can hear the drums are getting squashed already. And then on the black knob we have the speed. And that means how will the compressor react. I'm assuming it just adjusts the release time. But I can't be sure of that. Either way, just adjust to taste. However, what I have found works for me best is drive the compressor hard in the beginning, adjust the speed of it, and then take the drive down a little bit again. And while we are on the compressor page here, you can see that this icon here is highlighted the whole time. So that is the master compressor symbol on the KO2. And if we go back to the main menu, this turns off. However, you can see it flash now as the sequence is playing. And that means this shows up every time the master compressor is engaging. So you can see how much is your signal being compressed or how much isn't it being compressed. So if I go back to the master drive and for example, turn the drive down a little bit and go back to the main menu, that's still engaging a little bit. Let's turn it down even further. And now you can see the compressor isn't engaging at all. If we turn it up all the way, now the compressor is almost all the time working if I get into my other groups as well. Now the compressor is just on all the time. So in general, I would say don't obsess about what the compressor is doing. Just drive it a little bit harder at first, adjust the release, then take it down a notch and in general, it just sounds good all the time. So um, yeah, it's really the secret sauce of the KO2. And with that being said, I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you want to learn more, feel free to contact me for private online lessons, link up there or down there. If I forgot anything, let me know down in the comments. If you want to watch more tutorials on the KO2, there I think will be a playlist. Hope to see you in the next one. Until then, have a wonderful time. Peace.